Welcome to the course Algorithms in Computational Biology and Sequence Analysis. I want to start by giving a course overview before we get started. Why we are studying algorithms for biological analysis? The biggest reason for that is the big data challenge. Two or three decades ago, the amount of sequencing data that was being generated in a single experiment versus the amount of data that is generated today, there is a significant order of magnitude difference between them. And therefore, the need for efficient algorithms has significantly increased to handle this amount of data. The basis of this course is to study efficient algorithms that are scalable to process large amounts of biological sequencing data so that biologists can make useful inferences from this data. There are a number of sequencing technologies that can be used in the high throughput setting. They enable a large number of applications, for example, cancer screening, newborn screening, agriculture, disease outbreaks, evolution. And the focus of this algorithms is how to use these sequencing technologies to enable these applications. The course will include algorithms such as string algorithms, graph algorithms, combinatorial op optimization, probabilistic models, machine learning, depending on the problem in hand. The objectives of this course are to learn fundamental algorithms and data structure that power today's biological ana sequence analysis workflows. I would show you great algorithmic ideas that have come up in the past that form the foundation of biological sequence analysis today. Many important biological tasks such as finding mutations in a genome sequence or reconstructing evolutionary history of a set of species can be fulfilled by using such efficient algorithms. In this process, we will also see how do we convert a biologically motivated question into a well formulated computer science problem. This conversion is also very important because once we have the well formulated problems, we can use the rich algorithmic computer science toolkit to address these problems with efficient algorithms. The ideal target audience for this course is bioinformatics students or computer science students who have interest in molecular biology. Also for life scientists willing to master the algorithmic foundations for biological sequence analysis. As prerequisite, I expect that you have knowledge of fundamental data structures, for example, arrays, binary trees, graphs. You should have some experience of the design of algorithms, example, greedy algorithms, dynamic programming, divide and conquer, sorting, hashing and so on. And you should have some experience of even analyzing these runtime and space complexity of algorithms. Part of this course will also require you to have some understanding of this, the proof techniques, for example, proving claims by using induction, proving by contradiction and so on. And finally, in the assignments, I expect that you will have to program questions in either C, C++, Java or Python. So having experience in any of these languages is also going to be useful for you. If you lack experience, I suggest that you take some fundamental data structure course or algorithms course before taking this particular course. Tentatively, this course is divided into nine modules. The first module will cover introduction. Then we will move to string algorithms and exact matching. Subsequently, we will move to pairwise sequence alignment algorithms and heuristic sequence alignment algorithms, where we will see many dynamic programming based methods. So, subsequently to that, we will see de novo genome reconstruction algorithms that we will be addressed using graph based approaches. The module 6 will focus on evolutionary tree reconstruction algorithms to understand the phylogenetic trees of species. 
Module 7 will focus on probabilistic and machine learning based sequence models. Module 8 will look at the emerging topic of pan genome graphs and based on the time remaining we will also look at some of the recent research papers in this topic. So, in most of the lectures you will see that first we will be understanding what are the requirements in biology. We will once we understand those requirements we will formulate those requirements precisely in, in a mathematical formulation. After the formulation we will see first what could be the first naive algorithm that could be used to address that problem and we will see what is the time and space complexity that the naive algorithm would take. After that I will encourage you to think yourself for more efficient algorithms and we will look at some of the great ideas that have been developed in the past, the many superior algorithms that can scale to large amounts of data and then we will analyze their, their runtime complexity compared to the naive algorithms. In many of the lectures I will also include programming and software demos, this will be done with the help of TAs. We will also see open research problems for example, many problems that are still open and require further attention. And I will also give some optional practice problems just for food for your thought and so that you can think on your own and uh, practice the theory that is learned in the lecture. So, that completes this class. In the next class I will start with the introduction sec section and before we go into the theoretical aspects I want to show you a demo of indexing 400,000 SARS-CoV-2 genomes. This is just to show you what efficient algorithms are capable of and why they are so important. So, this will be serving as a motivating factor for you to know why what efficient algorithms can are capable of in practice. I want to show you a demo of indexing 400,000 SARS-CoV-2 genomes. Let me first start with the motivation of why we need to index so many SARS-CoV-2 genomes. As part of the pandemic, more than 16 million SARS-CoV-2 genome sequences have been uploaded to public databases. And if you consider the length of each SARS-CoV-2 genome, it is about 30,000 bases. Collectively the entire database if you look at and multiply 16 million times 300,000 you see that the entire database has 480 million bases in it. Now, the importance of this database is that it allows you to look at how the SARS-CoV-2 genome was evolving each year and in each, each of the different geographical locations across the world. So, as the data was generated and uploaded there was also need for efficient algorithms to analyze this amount of data. Now, why do we need indexing? Well, in any index data structure is always constructed to support fast information retrieval from a large data corpus. For example, you can look at Google indexes which where Google indexes all internet web pages to support fast search queries. Quality of an index, index data structure is determined by what query type it supports, how fast is it, what size the index is occupying and whether the index is returning optimal or suboptimal answers. So, to appreciate the importance of algorithms, I want to show you a live demo of a bioinformatics indexing tool that is capable of indexing 400,000 SARS-CoV-2 genomes and we will see what kind of queries it can support very quickly. Note that for this demo I am only using a subset of SARS-CoV-2 genomes. So, instead of 16 million I am going to use 400,000 genomes so that we can easily work in it in a live demo. So, let me open my terminal screen and 
let me show you a live demo. So we will go to the data. So what you can see here is that I have already pre-downloaded pre the 400,000 genome sequences. So the collective size of this file is 12 GB. If I look at these files, so if I, so this is not, this file is stored in a format known as FASTA format. If you open it up, you will see the individual genome sequences. So for example, the first SARS-CoV-2 genome, you see its ID and you see the actual DNA sequence corresponding to the first SARS-CoV-2 genome. If I scroll down, I will see subsequently the second genome sequence and third genome sequence. So, so roughly we will see 30,000 characters for the first genome sequence. And here you see the second genome sequence is starting and correspondingly its new genome sequence is starting after it. So this format is known as FASTA format which is a standard format in bioinformatics. So in, collectively we can count the number of exact number of genome sequences in this file. And as you can see, this has 409-226 genome sequences. And just to remind you that the total size of this file is 12 GB. Next I want to emphasize that maybe if, if even if you try to compress this file, let us say using tar gzip, the size of the compressed file is still 2.4 GB. Similarly, I can use gzip compression and still the size of the compressed file is 2.4 GB. Now next I would like to build a succinct index of this data and by succinct I mean that the index will be is designed in a way that it will be using very small size. So I have already before this demo I have already computed this index and this is, so this file SARS-CoV-2.fmd represents that index file. And if you look at the index file, it is only 33 megabytes. Once we have computed this index, for the subsequent queries I am going to show you, I do not need the original sequencing file of 12 GB. I am going to show you all the queries only with this 33 megabyte file. First, let me show you that only within this 33 megabyte file, I have the entire 400,000 genome sequences captured. So if I want to recover back the genome sequences from this small index, what I can do is I can run an open source tool called Fermi2. I can check the index file and I can use the command unpack on top of this index to see the individual genome sequences. And you can see that from the index, I can recover the original genome sequences losslessly. So in this construction of index, I have not lost any information that I had in the original file. So the, you can see all the line, all the sequences present. So this would be the first genome sequence, the next would be the second genome sequence and so on. You also see some of the n characters, which means that some of the genome sequences were not fully resolved and there is ambiguity whether this there is a, a, C, G or T there. So some of the genome sequences can also have N characters. So this was just to show that the original genome sequences can be recovered exactly from this small index file. Now I want to show you that this index can support very fast efficient queries. So for example, let us say I want to search for a spike gene protein gene sequence. So I have a this is a pattern that I want to search in the entire database. So this is a sp spike gene sequence of length about 3000 nucleotides and you can see this is the entire pattern that I want to search in the entire database. So what I am going to do is I am going to run that Fermi2 tool again. I am going to provide my query sequence, I am going to specify the index 
and I am going to run a command called match that uses that index and the query sequence and the purpose of this matching is to tell whether that pattern occurs in that entire database and if that pattern occurs then tell me how many times it occurs. Note that because some of the genome sequences would have been mutated this exact searching will only have will not is not necessarily so even though the spike gene sequence may be available in many in all the genome sequences some of them will have mutations. So what I expect is that I do not expect this sequence to be exactly matched in all 400,000 genome sequences but this may match in some of them. So if I run this command what you see is that it first reads the query sequence that I gave it. It tells me that the length of the query sequence that I gave is 3822 characters and in an instant it is able to tell me that the number of occurrences in the database that have an exact match with the gene query is 3902. In other words 3902 genome sequences have the exact same gene sequence that I just gave. Now the again I want to remind you that we are working with a very small index here. So we are not using the 12 GB file, we are only working with a 33 megabyte file index and you can imagine that why it this would be scalable. So even if I want to scale it to 16 million genome sequences, this tool can easily scale to millions of genome sequences because it is using very small storage space in my disk. Let me show you another type of query which this tool can immediately answer. So in this, in this uh, search what I want to do is I want to look at sequences of length 51 which are occurring in at least 300,000 times in the database. So this would could this could be useful okay when I want to know the sequences which are very very conserved across all or most of the genome sequences. So there will be certain sequences that are very conserved and that they are very less, less likely to mutate as the virus is evolving. So now in order to run this command what I am going to do is I am going to again specify the tool name, I am going to specify the index file and I am going to run this command called count and what you see is immediately it gives me all words of length 51 that occur 300,000 times or more. So for example this word G G T G A G T A this occurs 40 T 2 4 5 2 times. Similarly the next word occurs 392 235 times. So you can imagine that this can be useful to a biologist who wants to know immediately what are the segments of the genome that are highly conserved across the viral sequences. So one can configure the parameters for example if you want to know words of different length or if you want to change the number of genomes in which you want the, cons the word to be conserved, one can configure that and immediately get an answer to such queries. So what you saw here is that a succinct index which occupies only 33 megabyte space it indexed 400,000 genome sequences and not only you can recover the original genome sequences from the tiny index, you can also run fast information retri retrieval using that index data structure. The theory behind this tool we will study in a later class but this is just to give you an example of what efficient algorithms are capable of and how they can scale to millions of genome sequences and enable fast information retrieval and efficient processing. Thank you.